feel kind of embarrassed, friend. Trying to make a display of shooting before folks who were born with guns on their hips. Kind of gives me stage fright, too. I just naturally wouldn't do it either, but my boss refuses to send me a paycheck otherwise. My next demonstration, I'll show you that gigantic shells are sure fire. My friend, stand for Billy Donovan. Yours truly in person. In my next demonstration, you will notice our shells do not foul the gun. So, bossy, so. A cow growed in Texas ought to get jumpy over the little fireworks. Open up now. Just a little sulfur for your belly ache. So, bossy. So. There it goes. Take it easy. <laughs> You're laughing, Heine. What's so? Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Jean. I. 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 I didn't know it was you. I'm sorry, Doc. It really was funny. I guess the cow thought if it was good for her, it was good for you, too. Uh, Consound these fools that have to come to town to do their shooting. Just like the range wasn't big enough. Uh, oh, I suspect you want me to look at your mare's hoof. No, I just dropped in to tell you it's all healed, thanks to you, Doc. How much do I owe you? I'll send you a bill. Ain't had time to figure it out yet. How's your pop? And things at the ranch. Any better? Look, Doc. The Phantom of El Monte Del Rio again. No Phantom uses real lead. I wonder what all the shooting's about. Don't know. Well, there's one way to find out. Go and see. Don't forget to send me that bill, Doc. Here's something that will appeal to you all. Three bright and shiny $10 gold pieces, fresh from the mint. But they're not mine. They belong to the manufacturers of gigantic shells. Now listen carefully, friends, and they may belong to you. My employers are ready and anxious to stake them on the accuracy of their ammunition. There's no strings attached, just a straightforward proposition. There are three of you in the crowd who are willing to risk a dollar, three silver dollars, one silver dollar each. All you've got to do is to toss them in the air, all three at once. And for every dollar that reaches the ground before being hit by a gigantic bullet, the owner gets one of these bright and shiny $10 gold coins. You mean that we can toss up three silver dollars and you agree to plug them all while they're in midair? Not agree exactly, but if I don't, Fortunate owner gets one of these bright and shiny... Tender. All right, young fella, I'm on. Well, the day will go for it, so will I. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, there's someone else. I'll be the third. You realize, miss, if the bullet hits that dollar, it's liable to knock a golly west. I'm willing to take that chance. All right. If that's how you feel. Now then, we'll have to identify your coins. So give me your names and call out their dates. Gene Halloran, 1889. Gene Halloran, 1889. Jim Day, 1887. Jim Day, 1887. Bob Davis, 1890. Bob Davis, 1890. All right. Are you ready? Whenever you say, gigantic. <laughs> All right. You three step this way. All right. Give me your money, Gene. Bob. Here we go. That's the go 
suppose I used gigantic shells. That's good rifle shooting, son. But out here, a man keeps his health with a six-gun. And six-gun shells are gigantic specialty. It's good I know I can't show you fellas as much in the way of gunplay, but this act is on the program, so here goes. Well, they certainly showed us. Gigantic shells are on sale at your local stores. Well, take a look at that Remember, D-A-D. I've never seen anyone from the city shoot like that before. Perhaps my clothes fool you, miss. They are just part of the show. I cut my teeth on cowhide out in Arizona. How much do you earn in this little show? I've been asked that before, but usually by someone who has a grudge to settle. You have no enemies, have you? I don't know. Some people say it's a phantom. Whatever it is, it's already killed my brother. So a man with your shooting skill would be right useful. Um, I'd be interested in a 30-30 if I could have one made especially for me. I think I can arrange that, miss. Excellent. I wonder if you'd stop at my place on your way west. Well, certainly, I'll be glad to. And no obligations either way. We'll be expecting you then, tomorrow perhaps. Double A Bar Ranch. Anybody can direct you. Hey, you're all right, Jude. I didn't know a city fella could shoot like that. I'd hate to tangle with you, young fella. Come over and watch your whistle. Charlie here will look after your outfit. Thanks. Pretty faces can get a man in a heap of trouble, dude. Besides, we got some drinking to do. All right, what'll be, fellas? Make mine ride. Right. Not here. Yeah. All right, we're going to explore them. Well, straight away. Well, boss, same as usual? Uh, my friend here is drinking on the house. Give him the best. What'll it be, gigantic? Milk and salsa. We don't mix no fancy drinks here, amigo. Well, if you have in the cow, just use a squirt bottle. What's the matter, dude? Don't they drink liquor where you come from? Give him a shot of whiskey out of my private bottle, Steve. Yes, sir. No, no, just a soda. No offense, boss, but liquor doesn't mix with gigantic accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw the hole in her hat with your own eyes, Doc? Yep. Must have been less than an inch above her head. A man must be getting pretty low when he starts taking pot shots at a girl. Unless maybe it is a ghost. Cut him, Donovan. Yeah, I've never heard of a ghost going gunning before. Me neither. But it's all plum mysterious. Started when her brother was killed, more than a year ago. Shot right in the ranch house living room. Nobody around, except just her and her stepdaddy. Then the ranch hands begun getting lead poison. Always the same. Just a rifle shot, then a bullet, but never a clue, until there ain't a cow hand left that'll work on the double-A bar anymore. I open. I'll stay. Well, Doc, it's up to you. Mm. I'll risk a blue. Has anybody got a grudge against the family? Nary a soul. None of it makes reason. Unless it's rustlers. And that don't make reason either, because there ain't enough cows left on the double-A bar anymore for rustlers' bait. Three cards. All right, one here. How many cards, Doc? Uh, give me two, and don't be stingy with the aces. That's decent. Well, I pass. Pass here. Mm. I'll bet a blue. <laughs> you win, Doc. That's him. Four whiskey, Steve. And have them waiting on the bar. Yes. Yes.
Once more, Steve. Make it quick. Hey, Steve. This time making five. We would be greatly honored if the tenderfeet would join us at the bar. Much obliged, but I don't drink. Oh? Well, then, perhaps you oblige us with a dance. <laughs> Don't shoot, Pedro. My dad's a chief. Go that way. Billy Donovan, gigantic shell. I wouldn't disturb you, but I saw something very queer. I couldn't tell whether it was a man or a woman. Oh, did 
Did it look like a phantom? Well, I don't know. I've never seen a phantom. But, but whatever it is, it's in the house now. It came in through the rear window. Why, why, that's my stepfather's room, and he's a very sound sleeper. Let's see. He's a cripple, legs paralyzed. That's strange. The window's locked. Well, it looks like I've been imagining things. Poor fellow. Are his legs completely paralyzed? He can't walk a step. Then you really don't think you saw anything? Well, I, I guess not. You know, miss, when I'm driving late, I doze off and dream things awfully plain, like they were real. <laughs> and especially tonight, I, I heard a lot of talk in town about a phantom shooting around here. Well, I guess you better get back to bed, and I'll go look after my horses and report for duty the first thing in the morning. Then, then you're going to stay? Sure, if you really want me. After the crazy way I've just acted. Oh, I do want you to stay. Only, only you'll be in terrible danger. Then that settles it. I've always been interested in ghosts. And this will give me a chance to find out more about them. Good night. I suppose you know you can't ride the range in a rig like this. I sure do, miss. But I left town in a hurry and sort of neglectful last night. Now I've got to go back and express that stuff to my former boss, along with my resignation. But suppose you change your mind. Something might happen. And if you decide you don't want to stay I on... thought we settled all that last night. You know, miss, I'm easy to hire, but hard to fire. That's it, the warning. It always happens that way, and then... Well, you must leave, you must. I can't let them kill you, too. Don't get wrought up, miss. I've been shot at before. And I figure when somebody's trying to scare me off a job, well, they... They're just interfering with my rights as an American citizen, that's all. I shouldn't have asked you to come here. And why should you stay? It'll do no good. They'll only kill you. Sometimes a man just happens to meet up with folks he'd rather die near than, than go on living away from. Is your stepfather up yet? Yes, a half hour ago. Why, don't you think it's about time for him to meet his new ranch hand? Yes, only... Of course, since you're determined to stay. Well, that's strange. I left him here just a few minutes ago. Dad! Oh, Dad, where are you? Here I am. What do you want? I heard a shot a moment ago, and... Who is... Oh, Dad, Dad, tell me. That's Mr. Donovan, the man I told you about. That shot you heard was evidently the same. A warning. My stepfather, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Donovan. I'm glad to know you. Gene tells me you're setting yourself up as a phantom catcher. Maybe, if that's what I have to catch. But there wasn't anything phantom-like about that bullet that was fired just now. 
kind of losing interest in your job on account of it? <laughs> Not at all. As a matter of fact, I have a feeling it's going to be right interesting. Hmm. I'm glad you think so. But if you want to stop lead, I can't say anything about it. All the help I can give you is to tell you to be on your guard. It's liable to come again any time or any place. First five were killed on the range. A Dutchman down at the corral. And Arthur, that's Gene's brother, was shot down right in this room. So I've heard. I was sitting right here. And Gene was. Show him where you were sitting, Gene. That's it exactly. She was sitting there reading. Now, if you stand over there by that couch. A little further over, if you don't mind. Now, maybe if you'd turn a trifle, like you was looking at that picture hanging on the wall. There. That's it to a T. Arthur standing there. Jean was sitting there reading. And I'm sitting right here. When all of a sudden, must have been right behind me in the hall, a rifle pops like a clap of thunder. Gets Arthur through the heart. As soon as we get our wits together, we search the house, but don't find hide nor hair. The windows and doors all locked. The room's empty, and... Let me. Well, supper and bobcats, dude. How come you changed all your fancy clothes? When I decided to change the job. Oh. Come in, Jim. Much obliged. Morning, Gene, morning. How was your ornery old hide, Tom? Well, I don't notice much difference, Jim. Sit down. I haven't got time this morning. I was just riding by and I thought I'd fetch you last night's mail. Oh, I got a letter here myself that, that might interest you. Written by a fellow in St. Louis. He wants to buy a ranch and move southwest. She's got the run of things. The intimates, he's got about 15,000 to spend. Why, that's ridiculous. Double-A Bar Ranch is worth three times that much. Sure it is. But I thought, on account of the way things is happening, guess I'd better write him and tell him he'll have to raise the ante. You'd be wasting your time, Mr. Day. Double-A Bar Ranch isn't for sale. But I appreciate your interest. That's the spunk, Gene. You still got one of the best spreads in Texas. All you've got to do is to run that phantom killer into his hole. Likely that's your job, Gigantic. I have some notions in that direction. I hope you run onto him before Salazar runs onto you. Salazar? Sure. That's the fellow you tangled with last night. And once his feelings is hurt, they don't get cured until he turns the laugh on the other fellow. If you see Salazar before I do, tell him that Billy Donovan, Ed Egan's brother-in-law, is looking for him. I'm not figuring on getting that chummy with Salazar. So you better pick yourself another messenger. So long, folks. So long, Jim. You're cutting out a right smart job for yourself, son. Taking on Salazar and the Desert Phantom all at once. Salazar's never been beaten to the draw. What is it? What did you do to Salazar? Nothing compared to what I would have done if I'd known who you was. I guess I'll be hitting out for town. But you haven't had your breakfast yet. Wait just a minute and I'll fix you some ham and eggs. So you see, Ed Egan's wife was my sister. And when Ed found out what they had done to her, he went crazy mad. Which, of course, is fatal when you figure on shooting it out with Salazar. Well, that's why I came to Texas with my sideshow. 
hoping against hope that someday, somehow, I'd find the man that murdered my sister and brother-in-law. Three years to find him. And then I didn't even know him. Well, I've got to hurry off to town now. And on my way back, I'll amble up to the buttes and do a little investigating. Billy, be careful, please, of Salazar. I don't want anything to happen to you. Don't worry about me, Jean. What I know best is the ills and pains of horses and bovines. And a little about dogs and cats and fowls. Come on now, be a nice ducky and open up your bill. But when it comes to human ailments, I don't set myself up as knowing anything. However, I don't have reason to think that old Tom Jackson ain't paralyzed, permanent and plenty. Perhaps you're right, Doc. But it seems to me a man could pretend to be paralyzed mighty easy. That is, if he wanted folks to believe he couldn't get around. Yep, I reckon he could. Only I don't see why old Tom Jackson should... Senor Donovan's rig's tight outside of Doc Simpson's. Then Jackson himself has no legal right to any part of the ranch? No. Henry Holland, that was Gene's pap, fixed his will that way, left everything to his wife, and after her to their children, Gene and Arthur. Now that Arthur's dead, everything's Gene. Be careful that you don't choke him now. The double-A bar used to be the best spread in this end of Texas. That is afore the rustlers and this phantom got down to serious business. Everybody figures that Salazar done the rustling. But this ghost walking is plum mysterious. Some folks claim that it's a phantom of the old El Monte mine. El Monte mine? Why, what's that? Well, that dates way back when the double A bar was still a Spanish grant. The old grandee found a rich streak of gold and silver. After taking out a lot of ore, the streak petered out. So he done some more tunneling, but he couldn't locate the vein anymore. After that, he went to raising cows. Come on, sweetheart. Just one more spoonful. There, that ought to pep up your innards. Nice afternoon, is it not? I hear you have engaged a Mr. Donovan who expressed desire to meet me. I come with great pleasure to accommodate. Mr. Donovan isn't here. He... I don't know where he went. So? Then perhaps I'd better wait. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. He... he'll kill you. Ah, it is very kind of you to express such grave concern for my safety. For that, perhaps, you deserve a kiss. Salazar is always pleased to accommodate 
Such a beauty. Stay away from her. I've got the drop. You take another step and I'll shoot. Tell Senor Donovan I will be back. Thanks for the horse, Doc. I'll return him just as soon as I locate my rig. Uh, you better not go looking for it now. Appears to me like somebody, Salazar maybe, is setting a trap for you. The best way to cross him is to ride back to the ranch, but don't follow the road. Take the trail that turns off about a half a mile up, and it'll bring you in back of the buttes. Much obliged. I think I'll take your advice. I'm going to ride into town and see what's keeping Billy Donovan. Where'd you get that rig? Boy, I found it up the road a ways. The driver was tumbled onto the dashboard wounded. I lugged him up to my place and... Wounded? How... how badly? Well, I can't say. He's resting some easier, but he ain't recovered enough to name himself. So I thought I'd pick up his rig and... Well, what's the matter, miss? You know who he is? Yes, I... I think so. Would you take me to him? Why, sure, I'd be glad to. And you can take care of him while I locate a doctor. We'll make better time if we tie up the buckboard here and travel horseback.
All right, Jackson. We're going back to the house. You've got some explaining to do. Come on, snap out of it. Paralyzed, eh? Can't walk a step. No use, Jackson. You're not fooling anybody. Uh... You saw me? I... I was walking? You bet I saw it. I felt it. My legs must be all right again. Say, what are you trying to put over now? They've got feeling. Both of them. They are all right. Just like I've dreamed every night for weeks. That's what I dreamed, that I was walking. And now you saw me for yourself. Donovan. Donovan. When did you get back? What kept you? I figured you might help me answer that. Jean, did she find you? Where's Jean now? Why, I don't know. I... Say, what are you talking about? She started into town to find you. Well, let's see. Maybe she's back. No, you go ahead. I want to make it alone. Oh, Jean! Oh, Jean! My place is right up that trail. We'll leave the horses here. The going will be pretty tough for them. We can make it much better on foot. There's my place over there. Here they come, just the way the chief figured. Let's get out of sight. Right this way, miss. From what you say, it must be this Donovan fellow. in that room there. Senor Donovan is find the handkerchief you drop, I think. Pedro, I want you should see he do not lose his way. You will perhaps wing him. 
but do not kill. I want him to be a witness to a wedding ceremony before he die. Here? Yeah, in the bedroom. There's a key. You? I hope you will forgive me for not knocking, senorita. Where is Billy Donovan? He will come to us very soon. I have made request that he be witness for the wedding. Wedding? As soon as you are ready, Bonita. It is not as grand as I should wish, because the time to select have been so very short, for which I am very sorry. But in any gown, the Senora Salazar will be the envy of every... Senora Salazar? I, Senora Salazar. Why, I'd rather die first. Oh, but that would be great disappointment. I invite my friends here for wedding celebration. I should regret very much. Instead of wedding, we should celebrate the funeral. You're not frightening me. Before I do that, I should die first. That is not good either, because if I die, I cannot celebrate. And if you die, perhaps would be best if we have the funeral for Senor Donovan. You wouldn't do that. Not if it is the Senora Salazar who asks her husband not to. I'm going now. You may come out as soon as you have changed. Raise him. This is only the reception of our guest. <laughs> Up it too.
Senorita is nearly ready. In, in just a minute. Bueno, the priest is come pretty soon. We must not keep him waiting. Get your money down. Well, there's enough of this. Party drinks. This is a celebration. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Right. 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 Here is to my most beautiful senorita. <laughs> There's Pedro coming up the trail. What this fool thing about? He's come back without this Donovan. What you do, Pedro? Where is... Careful, Salazar. There's a gun in your ribs. Turn around. Now, where's Miss Halloran? She's uh, inside. We'll go in and get her. You lead the way, and I'll be right behind you. And one false move from you or any of your men is all the excuse I need to pull this trigger. Get going. Likely as not, Pedro's aim was bad. It's tough work winging a man when he'd been drunk up to shoot for the heart. We'll stop here, Salazar. Wait. Put the gun away. He'll kill me. I've got a gun against his back. And if you don't want Salazar punctured, you all better be right quiet and peaceful. Reach high, you hombres. Where is she, Salazar? In the room. Over there. Oh, Jean! Jean! Gather up the firearms first, Jean. Then you and I are riding back home. Perhaps you'd better tell your men, Salazar, that it'll be a foolish notion to follow us. You're going along. That'll make you a right-handed target in case of trouble. Those poor horses have been standing there all night. It's been a pretty busy 48 hours for them. And you, too. We'll have a chance to catch up on some sleep now. It's lucky you found that old map of the El Monte Mine, or else I'd be worried about the lead-slinging phantom. But I can't see what the map of the El Monte Mine has to do with the phantom. Perhaps Salazar here can tell you more about that than I can. What about it, senor? <laughs> oh, all right, then. There'll be plenty of time to explain after we get back to the ranch. Jean, I wonder if you'd drive the rig in. Salazar and I are going on ahead. All right. See who that is, Jean. It's only Jim Day. Hello, Donovan. Glad to see you alive and kicking. We were some worried when Doc Simpson's horse came back, empty saddle. That's the reason I rode out here, to see what had happened. Oh, morning, Gene. Hi, right, Salazar. You and the senior are getting quite chummy, eh? We are going to part company just as soon as I can take him in and turn him over to the law. So you let your foot slip at last, Salazar. Well, son, I gotta hand it to you. Nobody ever got evidence enough to hold him on before. Uh, what are you charging him with? Attempted kidnapping is enough to jail him on. But before I'm through, it's going to be for the murder of Arthur Halloran. I've almost got enough proof now that he's the phantom. When you taking him in? 
just as soon as I get Miss Halloran home safely. Well, you can do that before then, if you want to. See, uh, I carry a deputy's badge. Oh, I just use it to stop ruckuses around the saloon. But it makes it legal to turn your prisoner over to law and order right now. And me and sudden death will have him in the lockup inside of a half an hour. Well, I... I guess that would hurry things up some. Much obliged. What did Jim Day mean about finding Doc Simpson's horse and being glad to find you alive? I've got a lot of things to explain, but I guess I can tell them straighter after I get a wink of sleep. It's not really a miracle, Dad. See, when you were awake, your conscious mind got the idea that it couldn't make the nerves in your legs behave. Uh, well, it couldn't. But when you were asleep, your subconscious mind got to work, and, and... I know it's kind of mixed up, but I'll get you a book that tells all about it. I have to ride up to the north pasture and bring those calves back. I can do that now. You look as tuckered out as he does. Better take a nap. I've waited three years for this chance, Salazar. But I couldn't take advantage of it at your hideout. Because I needed your company to get Miss Halloran back here safely. Hmm. If it is your desire to shoot me, why you do not pull the trigger? Somehow, I'd never feel right about shooting a man without giving him an even break. As soon as I get my gun, I'm going to return yours. Then we'll start to draw at the same time. That is exactly as I would wish it. For 10 years, I am known as the fastest draw in all Texas. Now they tell me you dispute it. Such difference of opinion should be settled. Put that in your holster. All right. When you're ready, say the word. Bueno. Draw. Congratulations, senor. Salazar! Where, where did he come from? I think I know. They look kind of small. Guess I'll have to size them up with some tracks in the basement. If the sensor don't match, of course he could have been wearing oversized boots, but I doubt it. 
You see, there's a tunnel underneath this floor that runs through this old mine shaft at the top of the butte. That's where this so-called phantom did all the shooting. I'm done for. So you're the phantom killer, huh? Yes. And you let Salazar get away? Yes. He was the only one that knew I wanted this ranch. Because... I still don't understand why Jim Day did all the killing. He discovered a new vein in the old mine. And he wanted to scare everybody else off so he could get possession of it. Oh. Mm, that just about explains everything, doesn't it? All except one thing. What's that? Well, it started that day when you were so sad on tossing that silver dollar in the air. <laughs> I don't see anything to explain about that. Maybe there isn't only... Say, do you realize it's been only two days ago? Mm-hmm. Maybe an hour off one way or another. Is that what you wanted to explain? Oh, well, no, but it, it kind of leads up to it. It seems like I've lived ten years in these two days. <laughs> You've done more than most men do in twenty. I'll settle for fifteen. <laughs> Say, do you think that's long enough for a man to know a girl before... well, before he asks her to marry him? Oh, that probably depends on the girl and maybe on the fellow. Why do you make it so tough on a fellow to say what's on his mind? I... Oh, darn it all, Jean. You're the girl and I'm the fellow. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? 